Hello, it's Scott Manley here. This morning, Boeing had a test of their CST-100 Starliner spacecraft. This is going to be carrying crew to the space station as soon as they can prove that it's safe. This was a safety test to demonstrate the launch abort system from ground level. This is the case where the capsule is sitting on top of the rocket with the crew on board and then something disastrous happens and the crew need to punch out to escape a potentially explosive rocket. That means the vehicle has to rise rapidly under its own power to a sufficient altitude and a lateral displacement so that when it deploys its parachutes it lands a safe distance for recovery. So with the CST-100 Starliner, they have on board, um, you know, a pusher system. So they have four rockets that generate something like 60 tons of thrust. This accelerates it up to very close to the speed of sound in a few seconds. These are Aerojet rocket dyne thrusters, as are in fact all like 50 odd thrusters on this spacecraft. So it accelerates up burning uh, hypergolic fuels, you know, your usual monomethyl hydrazine, dinitrogen tetroxide. Uh, then after that stops burning, it has the smaller engines which adjust the attitude and keep it under control. It then will perform a flip around and deploy the service module or drop the service module which contains all this uh, propulsion and the other electronics needed and then deploy the parachutes before descending to the surface and landing on airbags. This will be the first uh, US spacecraft which is actually designed to land on land test went pretty well. We had um, we had the thing launch on time, accelerate. The camera work was absolutely terrible and I don't know why because this was performed at the White Sands missile range and they're generally pretty good at tracking rapidly moving objects. You know, regardless, we got to see the important things and we did get to see the thing descending and safely landing at a an okay velocity. And I say an okay velocity because while this demonstrated that the spacecraft was able to rescue the crew in a safe scenario, it only deployed two of three parachutes. And Boeing were very quick to say that this was an acceptable result. And I'm pretty sure that NASA is not going to consider this an acceptable result for the parachute deployment system. Uh, what I have done is I've sat down and I've looked at the footage and obviously I'm not an expert on parachutes or rockets or anything else, I'm merely an observer. And it looks to me though, as if they deploy the three drogue chutes initially and they start to pull out the main parachutes, but one of them just detaches. And so the third parachute isn't properly deployed and that's why something failed there and that's why Boeing's probably gonna go have to go back and perform a whole lot more tests to demonstrate that their parachute system is more reliable than this one test appears. Obviously, they've done a lot of tests and I think it's fascinating that SpaceX have had problems with parachutes, Boeing have had tech problems with parachutes. They say it isn't rocket science, but I'm telling you, we should be saying it's not parachute science because clearly that's the problem that, that everybody's happening. Another thing NASA might be concerned about in this particular scenario is the service module drops off and it contains all the hypergolic fuel, the dinitrogen tetroxide and the monomethyl hydrazine and this smashed into the desert floor and there's this wonderful big cloud of orange smoke. It's not clear how far that is away from the capsule, but that could certainly complicate recovery procedures. There might be some questions asked or they might already have been questions asked and it just looks really bad to us, you know, armchair observers on the internet. So I will be really interested to read what NASA ultimately has to say about this. And obviously I think that they just continue to test and iterate and solve all the problems. But looking forward, uh, the Starliner is set to fly to the space station later this year. This will be a launch without crew. So I don't think this test will have any effect on that particular flight. The big problem, of course, with going to the space station is you have to make sure there's a parking spot available to you and that the astronauts have time to you know, obviously coordinate and make sure everything happens. So I think given the work that's involved in making sure all that stuff lines up, that they will go with this flight and then work to remedy whatever problems or identify and remedy whatever problems they find so that they can then perform the actual launch with crew on board sometime later next year. If that gets pushed out, it becomes much more likely that SpaceX become the first you know, commercial operator to send crew to the space station. They have uh, recently confirmed, I believe, that NASA has accepted that their changes to the Dragon 2 capsule 
are acceptable and that they will be going ahead. So we can expect to see SpaceX performing their abort test very soon. Their abort test, of course, is an in-flight abort. And I'm really looking forward to this because it's going to be an in-flight abort using the most extreme conditions possible. Uh, they're going to have a Falcon 9 booster with, I think it's just going to be a dummy second stage. Uh, it's going to be flying at m through max Q and then the capsule is going to bug out at using its Super Draco thrusters. And then you've got this big booster without any aerodynamics going through the point where the aerodynamic forces are the strongest and hardest. This thing will probably disintegrate in flight and I hope that Elon has some awesome cameras pointed at it with slow motion capabilities because this will be expected and spectacular and you know we need that footage and hopefully later it's certainly going to be next year by now we will have SpaceX actually flying a crew to the space station so yes um, Boeing's test whatever they say yes it would have saved the astronauts it would have been acceptable if you were an astronaut on board however having one of three parachutes fail isn't gonna make NASA get the warm fuzzies about this particular test. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.